In this video, we're going to take a look at the workflow I use to resize and sharpen our finished image. Now, what I term as being our finished image is any picture you may have worked on in Photoshop Elements and you've built it up in layers. Now, this can just be two layers. It can be as many layers as you like. It's exactly the same. Now let's take a look down the bottom. You'll notice you've got two different, you've got doc is the document size. If you haven't got that, just click on the side and you can see you've got all these different uh, ones. There's many off the screen here as well, including scratch size, efficiency time in current tools. This is the most useful one though, is the document size. And this is showing 30.15 megabytes. This is the size of the document in layers. 27.6 is the size of the document if it were one single layer. And I'll come back to this. Now, this is also what I term as being my master copy. Notice I use the word copy and not piece. So I don't want to change this. I don't want to adjust the size. I don't want to sharpen it. I don't want to do anything with this at all. So what we're going to do for the first stage is go to File, Duplicate. And when this opens, we've got the duplicate image. You'll notice duplicate there it is there the file name as we can see from the title bar here and we can rename it I'm going to quickly type in squirrel because uh, that's what it is and we're going to duplicate merge layers only so tick duplicate merge layers only when you click OK to this you'll notice there it is it's now been duplicated squirrel we're down to one layer Here's our original. You can close this down. That's now going to be safely out of the way. So it doesn't matter what you do to this. Your original, your master copy is now safely out of the way. Right, so let's just take a look down the bottom. You'll notice these document sizes are now both exactly the same because we're down to one single layer. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to resize it. So let's go to image, resize, image size. And if we take a look at this, there's that pixel dimension that's uh, now familiar, 27.6 megabytes in size. Don't forget, this will vary as well, depending on what camera you are using. So yours is going to be totally different to mine. And the other important thing is if we just take a look here at resolution, this is set to 300 pixels per inch. This is or was, should I say, a raw file, which I've taken through Camera Raw, resolution of 300. If you're working on the JPEG, this may well be 72 pixels per inch. At this stage, just swipe across and enter a figure of 300 because 300 is ideal for both printing and it's ideal for digital projection or website use as well. So set them to 300. Once you've set it to 300, you may notice at the top you've now got a bracket with a rather massive file size in. So at this stage, if you go down to document size, which incidentally is available in both inches, centimeters, millimeters, whatever one you're comfortable working with, just enter a size which is going to reduce the bracketed dimension down close to that uh, the figure that you've got here. Right, so once you've done that, You've got the document size. Now, if you want to do a print, yeah, we've got a print dimension here of uh, 12 and a quarter inches by uh, eight points, so eight and three quarter inches high. You may want to swipe across. You may want to enter a figure of 10 inches. You'll notice the way the height have changed, has changed as well. That's because the two are linked, as we can see here. So enter whatever size you want for your print. If I just put in six, if you're going to do a six by four, there it is. There's your six by four. If you're going to do digital projection, come to where it says pixels at the top here and digital projection, you may want to enter 1400, something like that would be pretty good. You'll notice there it is. That's what I was talking about earlier. Bracketed figure It's showing it was 27.6. It is now going to be 4.01 megabytes in size. If you're doing it for website use, 1024 could be the, uh, the size you want and you'll notice the way it reduces further. I'm going to change this back to 1400 for digital projection. That looks pretty good like that. Some other important factors, all these here are ticked and the most important thing by cubic. Take a look at this drop down arrow. You have got nearest neighbor and by linear. Do not use these. They don't do a very good job. But by cubic, best for smooth gradients. You got best for enlargement with by cubic uh, smoother. You got best for reduction by cubic sharper. You could use these as well, but to be honest, I've used both of these and there's not a lot of difference. I tend to leave mine set to best for smoother gradients. I tend to leave this one. Now when I click on OK, this is going to resize it. 
You'll notice the way it's now changed down the bottom. You'll also notice the way our squirrel has jumped slightly backwards. I'm going to use Command 1 or Control 1 using Command 1, Control 1. We go into 100% of the size we're working on. And this is going to be really useful because for the next stage, we're now going to take a look at sharpening. So, over on the Layers panel, I'm going to use Command J, Control J. That's Command J, Control J. We have now duplicated the background layer. The reason for doing this is to sharpen it. I want to do it on a new layer. And we're now going to go to Enhance. You can use Unsharp Mask, but my favorite has got to be this one here, the Adjust Sharpness. Now, when we click on the Adjust Sharpness, we get this nice large dialog box. You can click in a window. You can move it around. You can bring your cursor out. The cursor's got a little square. You might like to select just a part of your picture so you can see exactly how that sharpening effect is, is looking so far. Right, taking a look at this, I'm going to reduce it down because in reality, if I just move this across into that area there, let's take a look at his eye. If I just click, there it is. That looks pretty good like that. You can move it around. Clicking down shows the before. There's the after. 71. For the camera I'm using, I tend to use uh, an amount of around about 76. That looks pretty good like that. And I use a radius, a pixel radius of 1. Bring your cursor over and it shows you, it gives a little pop-up, enter the width of the sharpening effects there. So in other words, we've selected one pixel and we're adjusting the sharpness, but it's not really the sharpness, it's the contrast. That's what you're adjusting by an amount of 76% around that one pixel radius. Right, for the uh, video, I'm going to take this up. I'm going to take it up a little bit more extreme into that area. You'll also notice under 100% it's flashing away. That means it's working itself out. It's also applying it to the main image because preview is ticked. And remove lens blur. You've got Gaussian blur, you've got motion blur. I don't think I've ever used these two. Uh, Gaussian blur, no. Lens blur, yeah, that's the better one. Motion blur, well, if you know the direction of the motion that's blurred in, then uh, brilliant. And you can change it down there. But uh, yeah, OK. Can be a little bit difficult. More refined toggle to produce a more refined sharpening effect. Well, sounds good. So you've got to use it, haven't you? But uh, really what it's doing is it's changing the algorithm of the, the way it's working itself out, which does produce a far better sharpening effect. Once you're happy with that, Click on OK, and there it is. We have now sharpened our image. If I just switch this layer off, you can see there it is. There's the before, there's the after. Don't forget, I did deliberately overdo this. Now, what we've actually done is we have sharpened the entire picture. We've sharpened it from the top corner here to the bottom corner there and everything in between, which is not the sort of thing you want to do. You may or you will just want to sharpen various parts of your picture. For example, if it's a portrait, you may just want to sharpen the, the eyes, the hair and the teeth. If it's a landscape, you may want to sharpen just a various parts of the picture just to give the eyes somewhere to rest. So you don't want everything to be sharp in your picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the layer mask. We're going to click on add a layer mask. There it is. That's the normal layer mask. We're going to change it from the normal layer mask, which is the reveal all, to the hide all. All you need to do is use command I or control I. That's command I, control I. We have now changed that layer mask. You'll notice as well that sharpening effect disappeared. Right, let's come over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the gradient tool, which has got to be my favorite way of doing it. And with this, we're going to change it to the radial gradient, which is this one here. If you come to that little downward facing arrow, just click on this window here, making sure you've got the foreground to transparent. That is important. It will not work on foreground to background. It does have to be foreground to transparent. Now that we've done that, I'm just going to press enter or return to remove that dialog. And I'm just going to click on this to reduce it down. I'm going to press X on the keyboard to make sure white is the foreground color, which will remove it. And uh, something else I didn't point out is we got the mode as normal. The opacity is 100%. I tend to drop this down to around about 70%. The reason for this is if it's 100%, you just blast away. And it's something you might like to build up gradually. So try reducing the opacity down. Now we've done that bringing it out. It's a radial gradient, which is going to give a soft transition to a radius around that part there. So if I just pull it out and let it go, and there it is. And you can see those little white spots. That's what we're beginning to sharpen 
with our image and if we just bring it around this area I'm going to do this quickly tend to take your time over doing it and I've deliberately selected this image where I have thrown the background out of focus and just so we can see exactly how it's going to work just scroll down a little bit there to come over this area the fur what you can also do is if you press the backward slash key press the backward slash key it brings up the quick mask yes the quick mask is in Photoshop elements and we can now see but if you come to this pink you can see the areas that we've actually got uh, and you can just go over them just to make sure you remove all of that mask to bring through underneath the parts of the picture that you want to be nice and crisp it's probably a better use word to use than sharp but so bringing back that area there and coming over the top part of his fur here and around his back at least I presume it's a him could be a her in which case sorry about that and there it is incidentally if you go over a part of the picture like this and you think oops I don't really want to go as far out as that press X on the keyboard and you can now come in and you can paint it back in you can see that orange going back into place so just bringing that back around like this you can just fill in little bits and pieces press in X again and just bring it out to his fur and his whiskers in that area I will go over it like this and there it is pressing that backward slash key again there it is job done at this stage make sure you're in at 100% as I say use command I control I to pop into 100% now because I did overdo that sharpening I'm going to reduce the opacity down so you can overdo it and then just bring that down into this area here looks pretty good what have we got we've got 86 percent if you go to layer you can go to merge down you can use the shortcut of command e or control e that's going to merge it down into one layer and then go to file and you can go to save as and i'm going to save it not as a psd file i'm going to save it as a jpeg file and i'm going to put it so select a folder of a choice i'm going to go for my finished images i'm going to click ok and next stage it's the JPEG option. This is the compression. You've got the large file there. You can take it right the way up. To be quite honest, uh, if I was using it for digital projection, yes, I would take it up. For website use, you only read, nearly read to be around the 7 to 8. The same for email. So I'm going to leave this on 8. So I'm going to post this on my website. I'm going to click OK to that. And there it is. You'll now notice it is a squirrel.jpg. That is the workflow that I use to resize and to sharpen our finished image. So go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video, but until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.